Hello, this is 12 volt Tom. I'm going to show you today an example of what to look for when you're porting on your cylinder heads for the Chevy six cylinder and how not to hit water, some proper angles to get the valve flow that you need in the ports. So I have some examples of heads sitting here that we've chopped up. And I'm going to show you what a stock one looks like versus one that we've modified here. And here's one that we've chopped up. You can see it's a show and tell version. And what we've done here is we've cut this and, and fully set it up for a bolt-in lump. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. So this is set for a 194 valve. This is a unmachined head and it's set up for, and this is the same section of a head, this one is set up for a 172 valve. So only a 172 valve. This is a 194 valve. So if you look here, you'll see these, these Sharpie marks that we've drawn in right here. This is just to give you an example of the metal that was going to be removed by doing that. So what we did is we actually machined this head. It was a cracked head junker. So we machined it. And you'll see the angles that we said we were going to do. And it opened up the throat of the valve. And there's there's multiple angles involved. Just to show you a few of these angles. So this first angle you see right here is a chamber relief. And we call that, it's a 30 degree angle. And you see it, it goes all the way to the side of the chamber on the side over here between the valves. And then over here, between the intake and exhaust, you can also see it's got some 30 degree angle here. And you see this head right here, you can see an actual crack right there. It's a severe crack. So we've machined with the 30, and that gives us our, our diameter we want for the valve. And then we come in and do a throat cut, and that's a 75 degree angle. And then there's a 60, and then right there is a 45 degree angle. So this black line, that's a 45. And from this black line to that black line is the 60. So there's things to, to be careful with. And if we look over on this piece of paper, I've, I've drew a 194 valve from dot to dot. That's a 194 valve. You can see that above that would be the 30 degree angles. Then you see the 45 degree angle. And then you can see the 60 degree angle, then the 75, and then you get all the way down the throat and you just blend that out by hand. The 60 degree angle needs to be 100 to 150 thousandths wide. And the width I'm talking about is from this black line to that black line. Those two black lines, you want that to be about 150 thousandths wide. And that's going to dictate how much metal you've left in the side of the bowl. So if you look right there, See how thin this piece of metal is right here? And if we look over at a factory one, so this is the same head chopped up, but slightly different castings. So see the metal that's left, I've highlighted in white. This is the, the same one right here. That's the existing metal on a factory port. And clearly the We've cut these heads in different spots. They're not exactly in the same spot, but the metal is less in this head. You can see it right there. Right there. And then we come over to this side. This is the opposite side of the very first head. And you can see the same thing going on. So you can see we have metal left there. And I'm going to measure that right now and tell you how thick that metal is. So that metal is right at 90 thousandths thick, right there, in a thin spot. And I'll come over here, 85 thousandths thick, right there. If you were to leave the 60 degree angle wider, you would also leave this to be wider also. So let's say you made it 150 thousandths, you could be 50 thousandths thicker here also. So I'm going to show you now. I won't put the valve in yet. 
you'll see we've also cut this for seats and the thin areas for the seats are right here and right there and this one's actually cracked already so it's cracked right here so a seat this is what a, an exhaust seat would look like and it goes in the head right there and it fills in the metal that we've chopped out of it there and it would go into the opposite side of the head too and then we'll machine our valve seat into this this is a hardened material that does well all right so another thing we've done to modify this head is we've prepared it for the bold and lump if we look at this intake manifold port right there it's got the bolt boss the bolt boss the, the bolt goes through to hold the head down and then your port feeds cylinder one and cylinder two around that boss and behind the boss the two ports join together and it becomes one massive port and it it it, it what it does is the airflow comes if you're trying to move airflow fast it comes straight through and it hits the back side of the port which is right here it slams into it and it has a hard turbulent time trying to curve to go back down into the valves through into the cylinder so this is the fix you come over here and you can see this port we've chopped out the bolt boss So the bolt boss is right here. We've taken it out. So if you look over here, this is the same area of the head. We've taken out the bolt boss and we've made this bolt in lump. The bolt in lump sits in here and it, it creates a false floor to the port, which is elevated. It raises the short term radi the short turn radius. So the air is now flowing higher in the in the port. It follows the top of the port. And it goes all the way and follows the back and then it follows it it doesn't slam into it it follows it so this bolt in lump increases your flow by 10 percent over the standard port it's because of the short turn radius so now to show you this this has been machined to hold this lump and you can see here i'm, I'm trying to hold it with my fingers now we have not done any hand porting in this head yet so see this area right here where the you can see the transition of the short turn radius we would still come in with the tool and smooth this little line you see in the casting of the head to match a little better to the the bolt in lump but it creates a really nice short turn radius and then the long term radius is out further and it follows better into the valve for you that's where you get your increased flow and then just to show you a valve sitting in the same machined port so that's what one looks like so the chamber with the valve sitting in that's 194 valve it's 200 thousandths bigger than the factory valve it gives you good flow a lot of guys will ask me do we have to worry about the valve hitting the piston so if you look here this valve is sitting deep into the chamber and i'm going to give it approximately a half inch lift which is a lot of our cams and that's about a half inch lift you can see the valve is past the the deck of the head but by the time that valve's open this far your piston is already it, it it's it's closing by the time they don't they don't uh, come into conflict it's not a problem with our engines so you have to take out the bolt boss you smooth the bottom of the floor like that you also get the flashlight turned on here you can see the little machined area that the new head bolt is going to sit into that new head bolt area that flat spot you see is no deeper than the edge of this throat right here it's the same and then you do the same thing to the top so you can see how it's smooth now if this was a done head we would have a, a half inch pipe plug in that hole 
we thread it through just slightly, and then we come in with that same tool that we used to smooth the bottom and this top, and we'll smooth off that pipe plug so that it's now the, the fit of that port. And then on the top side, we will mark that plug with center punch locations on the top of the plug. That way you know when you tighten it down to a certain spot, it's, it's lined up with the port properly. Well, hopefully that answers some questions for you, but it's real critical, again, so that you don't hit water in your ports when you're trying to do your throat cuts. So the, the 30, 45, 60 for a certain width of the 100 to 150 thousandths, and then a 75 degree cut. Do not come in with anything that's steeper than that because it just takes excess of metal away. And then you can then hand port this head. And you can see that line right there, this line right here. You smooth this out a little bit with your carbide air powered tool or electric powered tool. You'll smooth that. And you can see it right here also. You'll smooth this area out. So you're going to have this air that's trying to flow like this. It follows this wall and it follows along. So you can just take that little bit right there and smooth it out on both sides. But we do this in our shop. We do it every day. We sell them all over the country. In fact, we sell them all over the world. And I'm just trying to show you guys how to do it right if you're going to do it yourself. And if you have any questions, we do sell the parts that you would need to do this, either rebuilding the head or the bolt-in lump. And we ship them worldwide.